Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. It's been a while since we last talked. I was on a vacation with internet friends and I took an extra week to brainstorm some good video ideas and work on some miscellaneous stuff relating to the channel. But we're back now and hopefully going to get on a good schedule of one video every two days. Hope you all are well. Let's begin after a quick word from our sponsor. The sponsor for today's video is Skinport. They're a third party marketplace with a huge inventory full of the best CSGO items at great prices. I personally use Skinport quite a lot and I do believe they're a great option for all your item needs. Check them out with the link in the description below to support my channel. I'd also like to take a moment to talk about my Discord server. So there's actually a pretty big benefit to joining my Discord server, and that's the fact that if you are in it and I don't upload a video in a few weeks or whatever, if something like a vacation happens, then you guys are actually going to be able to talk to some of the smartest minds in the CSGO investing community on Discord and get your ideas and questions answered for all of your investing questions, which is pretty important. So that's probably a good reason to join it. You can use the link in the description below. Hope to see you there. So today's video is actually going to be over the Shutter Web operation and only a little bit related to the Broken Fang operation. The reason for that is because the Shutter Web operation actually saw some pretty crazy stuff over the last week which was huge jumps in prices on all of the most popular items from it and it's kind of a long time coming and I'm going to talk about why this happened in today's video and also the future of these items from this point on. So let's start off by talking about some of the items changes. So obviously the Desert Eagle Armored Jorban Gunder that's going to be a big one from that Shutter Web operation. That one actually over the past week saw a huge jump in price going from its average price of around $69 up to over $100 and then it kind of stabilized and normalized back down at around 100 to 102 that kind of area and then just recently actually spiked back up to around 115. Now if you've been following this item for a while you're probably kind of surprised by this because the weird thing about it is that this item has kind of sat at a very constant price for quite a long time now and this is sort of an unexpected jump but is it really that unexpected or is there actually a pretty solid reason for it? Before we talk about that though I also wanted to clarify that this is not just something that happened just specifically to the factory new Emerald Jormungandr this actually happened to all wares of the Emerald Jormungandr and actually to pretty much every operation skin as a whole. So what's reasoning for it? Well the main crux of this entire rise is actually based around the fact that there is uncertainty in any marketplace. So the concept of uncertainty is basically just that people think something is going to happen or think that something isn't going to happen which is going to cause prices in the future to either go up or go down. It's rooted in speculation and it's not really a great thing for a marketplace as a whole and it can cause a lot of items in CSGO at least to not really maintain prices that they deserve. From the perspective of someone who actually did upload a lot of videos during the Shutter Web operation I can tell you for a fact that there was a lot of people that were very uncertain about the future of operations and the future of the Shadow Web operation items as a whole. The reason for this mainly was because the Operation Shadow Web came after a long era of basically no major updates to CSGO, and so having an operation really threw people through a loop, and because it was so unexpected, a lot of people expected something new after the operation was over, and a lot more releases of operations or major updates. Obviously that didn't happen, and to most logical people, they could find out from the operation release dates that this was probably not a likely scenario. Regardless, there was a generic idea in the community after the Operation Shadow Web was released that there was going to be a lot more major updates to CSGO very quickly, and because of this, people expected them to reuse the Operation Shadow Web collections in future operations, which would obviously cause the collections to lose value as there's more of them in the marketplace. Because there was a lot of uncertainty about major updates coming in the future, and there was a lot of uncertainty about what items that CSGO would actually attach to future operations, people were not really willing to go all in on the operation investments, and the items didn't sell all too often after the operation ended because there was still a lot of uncertainty about this. Now, despite this, we actually did get a Broken Fang operation after quite a while since the Shutter Web operation. However, it was a little bit faster than people probably expected. Now, the cool thing about the Broken Fang operation is that they actually released brand new collections, including the Control Collection, the Havoc Collection, and the Ancient Collection. This obviously meant that the Shutter Web collections were not re-released in Broken Fang, which caused a lot of people to suddenly realize that Shutter Web was probably going to be a pretty solid choice to get into now that the collections were not re-released. Now another thing that probably also contributed to the rise of Shadow Web items was also the fact that the control collection and the other collections as a whole were actually higher quantity now because people were able to spend their stars on basically whatever they wanted on a more specific standing. So basically with Shadow Web you had to kind of just randomly get drops from the operation from each of the times that you got more stars and it was not very controllable like it is with Broken Fang. Obviously this meant that Broken Fang left a lot of people unimpressed because there was going to be higher quantities of the items that people would normally invest into. Because of this, a lot of people turned to Shattered Web because they now knew that 
Spider Web didn't have as much of a quantity potential as the new Broken Fang operation had, and they also turned to Shattered Web because there was now less uncertainty of the collections being released. Both of these things accumulated together to kind of create this big rise in the Shattered Web operation as people started to turn to it and really get into it, and now we're seeing some pretty insane prices that were very unexpected, and they're actually also basically pretty close to all time highs because the only other time Shattered Web operation items got this close were when there was actually a glitch on the Steam Marketplace where people could actually not list items for sale, they could only buy them, which caused items to obviously rise in price because there was nobody actually listing new ones. Now that we've looked at the generic price changes and we've also talked about why this is actually happening, let's go ahead and move into the future of Shattered Web as an investment and also the future of operations as a whole. I also wanted to mention real quick that I actually did say that this was going to happen. I did believe that Shattered Web was going to see some price increases due to the uncertainty being removed, and that actually was all said in the first video I made on Broken Fang. So, I mean, if you listen to me there, you probably could have actually profited off of this recent rise. Now, I believe Shadow Web items are going to continue to see rises in price on the horizon. The main reason for this is because the uncertainty we just talked about was the main barrier for the items going crazy in price. Now that that barrier is removed, the sky is the limit. Not really, though. The limit is the maximum price any random person is willing to pay, but you get the point. I think the main candidates for seeing major rises in price are going to continue to be the same ones that a lot of people are looking towards since the beginning, like the Emerald German Gunder, the Augmented Lily, and stuff like the Broke Purple, possibly. So that's going to be the main candidates, but there are still some side candidates that can still see pretty nice price increases. I do think the gun gear is still going to go pretty high in price, and I think it's going to either maintain its current price or continue to go higher because that item is obviously super rare now, and it's really hard to get your hands on one for anywhere near a cheap price. It's also just a really good looking op and also kind of makes the op fade pale in comparison to it. Another important thing to factor in is also what the gun gear's price actually makes it to. The main reason for that is because the Negev Mjolnir trades up to it, and that could actually cause the Negev Mjolnir to rise in price quite a lot because the Gung Gear is going to be very desirable and getting it through a trade-up is probably going to be the only real obtainable way. By extension, of course, the stickers from Shattered Web are also probably just going to continue to see price increases. They're obviously less rare than crazy stuff like the Gung Gear, but they are still sort of rare in their own regard, and I think that's going to continue to see price increases. As for the lower tier items and other fringe picks that you might have had from the Shattered Web operation, I think those are still going to also continue to go up in price, and I don't think there's really an argument you can make that those are going to decline with all of the recent events, so that's kind of my take on that. Now moving on to future collections and sort of the precedents that we now have set because of Broken Fang and Shattered Web. I do think that there is only going to be new collections released in future operations. I think this is, can be said with pretty high confidence because of Broken Fang releasing new collections and a lot of people expecting them not to. And I think that really does lead towards the idea of new collections every time a new operation is released, if there is even more operations in CSGO, who knows. But I do think that's going to be the precedent from now on. I also think that the new precedent is also going to be stars being a thing that you can just spend on certain roles, like we see in Broken Fang. I think allowing people to choose what they want to spend their stars stars on is both good for the consumer and good for Valve because more people are going to be willing to buy stars knowing that they have more control over what they get. So really I think those are the main two takeaways from the Broken Fang operation and the precedents that it can set for the future. Now if you had more questions about Broken Fang, don't worry, I will be uploading more Broken Fang content. There's still a lot more content to be taken out of this new operation, so I am going to be releasing more content on that in the future. I did actually do a stream recently and I'm probably going to be planning on doing more streams in the future as well, and I do do giveaways quite often on those because they're kind of just a fun little side thing to do. So if you do want to watch my streams, I actually do stream over at twitch.tv slash NaloCSGO. So if you want to go check those out, that would be really appreciated. Also be sure to check out my skin port link in the description below, my discord link if you want to go ahead and answer any questions that you might have that I don't answer in these videos. And also go ahead and check out my other social media links like my Twitter, because those are going to be great ways to connect with me, DM me, and see what I'm up to. Final note I wanted to make is thank you guys for all the support on the Broken Thing videos. I'm probably going to be making more videos more consistently, like one video every two days going from now on. It is kind of hard to keep up that schedule because of the higher level of quality expectation that my channel has as a whole, and also just because I want to put more ideas out into the open of, you know, my mind before I'm able to actually produce those videos. So that all kind of accumulates in a, you know, harder to make videos more consistently schedule, but I am going to be working towards it, so we'll see what happens. Anyway, thanks a lot for checking out this video, and by extension, the other videos I've made so far on Broken Fang. Hope to see you guys in the next one. Peace.